A growing crisis is unfolding at the U.S.-Mexico border as we learn many of those crossing are young children. CBS News confirmed last month 7,300 unaccompanied migrant children were transferred into a network of shelters run by the U.S. Refugee Agency, a record number for February. In an interview, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says now is not the time to come to the border. Do not take the dangerous journey now. Give us time to build an orderly, safe way to arrive in the United States and make the claims that the law permits you to make. For more, I want to bring in Ali Norani, the president and CEO of National Immigration Forum, as well as the host of Only in America podcast. Ali, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. So what do you think needs to be done to address this dire situation, this influx of unaccompanied migrant children at the border, some we understand as young as six years old? Well, it's a complicated problem that requires a complicated solution, and that begins with addressing the root causes in Central America. For the Biden administration to invest $4 billion over four years begins to make up the ground that these countries lost in terms of addressing poverty, violence, uh, corruption, establishing or reestablishing programs as a, such as the Central American Minors Program allows unaccompanied children to pro, uh, apply for protection closer to home and not necessarily not make the, the dangerous journey to the U.S.-Mexico border. And then the other piece that needs to happen south of our border is that the Biden administration, along with the Mexican government, needs to disrupt the cartels that are, frankly, the only ones benefiting from the situation as it currently stands. And then here in the U.S., the Biden administration needs to stand up the infrastructure in terms of facilities, the processes, and then ultimately uh, the capacity so that these children can go through a process that's safe, legal, and humane. Now, it's totally understood that the process or the situation in Central America and parts of Latin America is dire and needs a long-term uh, solution, a long-term help from the U.S. But in terms of the immediate situation right now, these children who have described in interviews poor conditions, including overcrowding and, you know, not being able to take showers at regular intervals, and some of them even described going hungry, um, what... What do you know about the conditions where these children are currently being kept? So currently, a number of the children are being kept in Customs and Border Protection facilities. Now, according to law, they should only be in those facilities for 72 hours. These are not facilities fit for children, and argue, I would argue that a number of these facilities aren't even uh, fit for adults, but that's another issue. Um, after, within 72 hours, the children should move into a Health and Human Services facility. For the Biden administration to, to deploy FEMA to work with CBP, and as DHS announced this morning, to begin to set up joint processing facilities so that CBP and HHS are literally working shoulder to shoulder to make sure these kids are safe, that they are going through a legal process to identify their guardian, that these children, these, these young people are, are vetted, and that ultimately they can pursue their legal case for protection with a legal guardian or a foster home uh, here in the U.S. So bringing together these resources, and as the administration has been saying, kind of a, a government-wide approach, I think is critical. And let's, let's hold them accountable as this process unfolds. And do you think that that will be enough to catch up with the influx? Because certainly right now there's a log jam. I think it will be. I mean, because remember, this is, you know, yes, these numbers are large, but this is not unprecedented. Every spring for the last five, 10 years, we've always seen this sort of increase in migration from Central America. The problem is we've never actually updated our immigration system to actually address the problem uh, in, a, in a holistic way. But I think by setting up the, this infrastructure, these logistics, and these processes, um, in short order, these numbers and this, the, the, these scenes and these stories that we're hearing should uh, subside. Now, you say that every spring we see this influx. Is it unprecedented, though, to see th this number of unaccompanied migrant children? And if so, why do you think that is happening? Why do you think more and more parents are sending their children on this harrowing journey either alone or with acquaintances? Um, because to be unaccompanied when you come uh, to the border, it's my understanding that that means you are not traveling with a close family member, correct? 
Well, correct. That is correct. Or at least you're not presenting to a, a CBP agent with a close family member. In essence, you're presenting at the border alone. Um, the reason that this is happening is because of the continued situation in Central America of violence, of corruption, and of, of uh, uh, poverty. Those have been exacerbated by two factors. One is the hurricanes that moved to Central America at the end of last year that really just decimated economies that were struggling because of COVID-19. But second, and probably most importantly, is that the cartels are selling a lie that America is open to unaccompanied children, if not everybody. And cartels are selling this lie at a price of six to ten thousand dollars a pop, which means that a family who has uh, um, kind of a meager ends to begin with, they're saying, you know what, I'm going to do the perfectly rational thing in my mind in terms of getting my child to safety, and that safety, according to this person, is the United States. So that's why I think that the Biden administration really needs to take a, an approach that yes, addresses the situation here in the states, but also looks at the entire journey uh, that these dangerous journey that these children are. are taking from home to the border. You make a very good point. As far as you know, is the Biden administration in talks with Mexico about how to deal with these cartels and shut them down or at least weaken them? That's what we've been really urging. And, you know, yesterday we were actually on a mm -hmm. conversation. We were briefed um, by members of the Domestic Policy Council as well as the National Security Council as a question that we posed to them. And they said that the conversations were underway. Um, well, you know, from our perspective, conversations are great, but we need to see some really uh, clear joint tactics between Central America, Mexico, as well as the U.S. to disrupt these these cartels. Because, like I said, they are the only ones winning right now. And we as a country have really outsourced our immigration system to these cartels for far too long. So we got to we, we got to. Pick these, pick these cartels apart, and ultimately Congress needs to regain their power uh, uh, in terms of legislating and fixing the system. Ali Norani, thank you so much for joining us. You make excellent points. We appreciate you sharing your insight.